of this main match. There's our referee that's going to oversee proceedings in this evening session encounter. And it'd be nice to get the intros. Ken Doherty will be out next, of course. The great man. There he is. Always good to see Ken playing. He brings something different to the table, doesn't he? Clever player. Hasn't had a great season, Ken, but he's always going to be a danger. And he played Ronnie O'Sullivan recently, didn't he, out there in China, losing 5-1. So he's got another pop at the great man to tonight. And I'm sure there'll be a great reception for Ronnie O'Sullivan, who, of course, this season won the Shanghai Masters. A few hundred miles to the south of here. There he is. Just his third ranking event appearance this season, Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's had five ranking wins in China in total. You would have expected more than that, but it's a packed house, as you can see. They're out with the cameras and taking their snaps. Most of these, uh, the people in the crowd here, it'll be the first time they'll have seen Ronnie O'Sullivan play in the flesh. So we're all looking forward to it, I'm sure. Yeah, just getting the queue and everything all sorted. A lot of excitement in the crowd. So, best of 11 frames all the way to the semi finals this international championship. The semi finals, incidentally, are best of 17, and the final, a best of 19. But. Uh, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan who's won the toss and he gets us underway. And I'm delighted to be joined by a very good friend of Ken Doherty. Good morning to Fergal O'Brien. Thank you, Alan. Yeah, looking forward to this match. These pair of great history, not just in the game, and their head to head record. They played 27 times. But of course, in the early days, when Ken first moved over to Ilford in Essex, where Ronnie was based, they had plenty of practice matches. And again, of course, even the most recent history, they only played last month. Ronnie beat him 5-1. Ken made a good start. Probably could have went 2-1 up. That proved to be pivotal. Ronnie being Ronnie, steamrolled ahead and won 5-1. But today is a new day. Again, you know what Ken, he'll be trying anyway. Yes, he sure will. You we know, always get 10 out of 10 for effort with Ken Dorty, you know that. He's a 33 years, his 34th season as a professional now. A great man. 8 tables, as I said in, uh, during the intros here. Lots of good matches, including John Higgins, David Grace, Tachaya Unnu has taken on Matt Selt. And of course, uh, as mentioned, Table 2, very interesting. We'll keep you up to date on all of these matches, but Judd Trump, the man of the moment, obviously, at the moment, taking on Wang Jinzong of China, just 12 years of age. He wasn't even born when Neil Robertson won the World Championship, so that <laughs> gives an indication. I look forward to seeing some of him, hopefully. Yeah, Judd's actually gone a full week now without winning a tournament, so <laughs> he'll be looking <laughs> to end this drought. <laughs> but I think this match actually, probably crucial fact is going to be from distance. Of course, we know Ken is an exceptional safety player, as is Ronnie. But when Ken gets mid-range, a long-range pot, will he put enough of them to get in? And also, if he does get in, can he win the frame in one visit? Probably said the last few years, Ken probably hasn't been scoring as heavy as he did in his absolute pump. Yeah, Ronnie comes into this, as I said earlier, in the back of that Shanghai Masters triumph. 11 9 in the final, good opening red. Yeah, that final against uh, the world champion, wasn't it? Look at Brazil, 11-9 in the end, he got the job done. 
five tournaments, five ranking events in all for Ronnie O'Sullivan in China, but not in this neck of the woods in China. We're just, just under 100 miles or so from Beijing here in Tianjin. He did win the China Open back in the day, Ronnie, but that was actually in Shanghai, so he hasn't, hasn't won in Beijing in the surrounding area. Yeah, it definitely appears to have a different mindset for these tournaments in China. Over the years, there was times he didn't bother to enter, and also sometimes actually when he was playing, he sometimes got the impression that he was happy enough if he lost and went home, but that's no longer the case. And he's actually been talking about nearly making them his priority this season outside the Triple Crown events. Obviously won in Shanghai, got beaten in Wuhan, but certainly he couldn't fault his commitment and effort there. Yeah, not that Ronnie's overly worried about rankings and all that goes with that, but for us guys in here, and of course you viewers, it's always interesting to note some of these ranking positions. The Grand Prix at the moment is 49th in running. That's on this season alone in ranking events. So he has a bit of work to do if he's going to get a place in the Grand Prix in early New Year. Also very tight at the top regarding the battle for world number one. He says he's not too bothered about that, but we don't believe him. <laughs> he said he wasn't bothered about beating Stephen Hendry's record as well. Look how that worked out. Yeah, is that probably the, the one unticked box that he has, isn't it, number eight? I suppose it I suppose it is really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good little opening exchange this, isn't it? Typical of well, both of them, let's be honest, especially obviously Ken. Such a wily fox of a player. He's trying to keep Ronnie at bay early. That would have been part of his game plan, wouldn't it? You know, absolutely. It's interesting that in their approach to safety, you would probably argue Ken's safety is more concerned with sounds obvious, but keeping things safe. Or Ronnie, you just feel plays every shot with side, every single shot even side. So it seems to be more inclined to try and put his opponents in trouble rather than just effectively keep it safe. So it's going to be interesting to see as the match unfolds the dynamics of that. So the cagey start continues. Nothing easy here for Ronnie. Just about reachable, this one, with his opposite hand if he wants it, but he doesn't carry a mini butt. One of the, probably the only player on the tour that doesn't. He can't reach it where others would be able to. I think that's something that I know that he gets by on talent. I understand all that, yes, but why wouldn't you? Yeah, I know he's certain little instances like that he can be a bit quirky of nearly saying the same way he's uh, staying with the same ch the, the chalk Ever, most people have moved chalk but he's still old school well, triangle chalk that everybody uses in the club 
Yes, he does have a reason for it, actually. It's, he has a single unit Q case, does it? There isn't room, basically, in his Q case. Surely he can afford a bigger Q case, well, mm, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, a good opening red by Ken Doherty. Oh, that's a nice kiss, isn't it? Yeah, he's forward now because he actually hit Six. that quite badly. Once it hit the boy a lot lower. And you feel Ken is going to win today. It's these kind of opportunities he has to maximise. There might be a few frames where he might even get a chance at all. So certainly the scrappy frames are the frames you think he should win. He'll have to win today. 14. He has the nickname Crafty Ken, and rightly so. That's not to undermine what a very heavy scorer you know, he has been throughout his career. Oh. Yeah, over 250 centuries. You would describe him as a positive attacking 20. player with a great safety game to fall back on. 21. Again, at his best in amongst the meatballs with close cue ball control. Yeah, meanwhile, Judd Trump has got his evening underway with a clearance of 116 to lead his young opponent one frame to nil. This is just the start that Ken wanted, isn't it, Fergal? So, you know, he's now had a, almost a little loosener punch a few easy ones in and he's trying to keep tight control of that cue ball. Yeah, we just, just lost fractionally there. And apart from making the pot a little bit more difficult, i just go into the reds and just... Again, of course, not guaranteed now to be in ideal position. Fully commit to the pot there. 42. Couldn't be too concerned with exactly where the white was going. Forty-three. Again, just slipped out of position. Again, just all a byproduct of a couple of shots ago not being perfect on the blue. How much of this white has he has he enough to be able to pull it and get back down the table? Obviously not Great. just has to. Of course, you don't have to win the Ken frame Doherty. in one visit, but he'd be bitterly disappointed going back to this chair there. It would be beautiful to win that one in one visit. Put a marker down. had to trust the luck, didn't he, there? So one good positional shot. And he should be well set to win this opening frame, Ken. So key shot this coming up. Six. 
intended to obviously miss the brown there. It's twice now that similar shot. That blue Ten swinging point. it around a couple Six. of angles. Actually, that's low enough on the white. Again, obviously 48 ahead in control. Seems just added even extra significance to this frame. It's had a couple of good chances. So a little bit of pressure on this red here for Ken. Obviously, he just pots it be nicely on the black. I think in the modern day, a, a lead of this size, it, it used to be decisive, didn't it? More so back in the day, 20, 30 years ago. Not so much now, but just the way the Reds are, it's going to take a lot for Ronnie to A, get back into this frame and B, win it. Not like Ken to make that sort of mistake. He's usually, well, let's be honest, one of the best at defending this sort of position normally. Yeah, nearly 50 points behind. A few reds on the cushion. He's one of the, the last player in the world you'd want to be competing against. But again, as I said, the way the frame has went, it'd be a very early stages, of course, but it would certainly be a blow not to win this frame with the chances he's had. Again, as I said, you'll expect there'll be frames where he won't even get a chance. Over the best of 11, you feel there'll be little spells or bursts. Ronnie will play well, so... Of course, Ronnie will also be Nine. well aware of the significance of it now. How many times have we seen Ronnie come to the table when it appeared safe or very difficult? And it seems the blink of an eye. The balls are perfect and he mops them up. 17. Yeah, that black to just push the, the red on a few shots ago was beautifully played now this is the key and again played nicely the pockets so far today we've been sort of watching and, and a lot of you would have been watching along with Neil and Dave earlier the pockets are playable let's say you know along that back cushion this end cushion you, you fancy them don't you they even look a fraction bigger Normally, particularly day one, brand new cloth. As they're playing, they tend to slide in. But even if you look at the angle, if you look at the top left pocket, 31. that just seems a bigger area already, just even looking into it. 32. It's such a clever little shot, that, isn't it? Playing on black, knowing that pink was in reserve. So, automatically going to be on the red. But the pink doesn't drop. Ronnie O'Sullivan. 32. A let off for Ken there would have been fair in the worst. You might see about the pockets here. It looks fairly straight. Ken not getting too ambitious, just push the black to the side cushion. Easy cover. Ken Torty, one. 
I didn't have all of this yellow to hit the two cushion escape. Looking for a glancing blow. That's what he played, but it's a free ball. Foul and a miss. Ken Doherty, four. Free ball. Yeah, so what, what do you play here, Fergal? <laughs> Options. <laughs> yeah, I think ideally he'd, he'd be like to put another colour safe. That might be possible. I suppose you could potentially try and push the pink towards the side cushion near the bulk line and maybe get the snooker behind the blue. Yeah, of course, it's one hey. of those you can't just roll in behind the black. So. Good call as ever, Fergal. Yeah, I think that was the sensible play. It would just make it awkward. Yeah, it just say, he couldn't quite get the pink to the cushion, but... Yeah, you could try to be a bit too clever and put, got the pink closer to the cushion. And apart from getting the snooker, obviously now pink to black where they are is a lot more difficult as well. Not sure if we'll be playing this. Brown. Two. Usually very good with the rest over the years, can can just leave this green now to Ronnie Mead Snookers. Very nicely done. Check of the scoreboard. We want to see this brown disappear because there's one snooker at the moment on the brown to tie. So Ronnie will come back. Kent already five. The table looks a bit untidy, but actually they're in decent positions, aren't they, pink and black? Yeah, they're just far enough away from the cushion that quite appealing you feel you can get behind there point point in place there yeah there we go so i always think with this shot the miss is to the right of the brown as we see it with this early slide as well just to the right of the brown as we see it oh we got the right half but the cue ball wow. i don't think it's a free ball but wow yeah, it's very important there, obviously. I don't think you kind of be predicting if I hit this brown, I could go in off there. It's funny though, isn't it? it? It was a half baller and the misses to the right half of the brown, typically. I mean, that's maybe been a wee bit hypercritical. Excellent shot. Actually, I think most players probably would have played the brown there. It's very possible you just would have had to hold yeah. for the blue. But a clever shot, and all of a sudden, the space of a minute, the whole dynamics of the frame has changed. Difficult to hit here for Ken. And of course, no guarantee you get it safe. So let's just quickly drop into table two where Judd Trump leads Wang Jinzong by two frames to nil, and it's been fireworks over there. Judd Trump continuing on his uh, incredible form of late. We'll keep you up to date as that match uh, goes on this evening, providing top entertainment as usual, Judd Trump. Now then, what's Ken Doherty got here? Got a piece of the brown. Quite nicely played, all in all. Do you be sneaky here and try and spring the black open? Cushion first. Whether you played it or not, it's a pretty decent result. It'll be fascinating to watch this exchange between the pair of them. Get an insight into their snooker brains.
and of course has the insurance that worst case he's a respotted black and also the black's also on the side cushion but <coughs> also just adding to the importance of the frame from what we've seen already Yeah, Simon. Four. He did well there to avoid Dan off. It was almost like in a billiard shot, wasn't it? A billiard player would would have known they would never be going in off with that half ball. So it was well played. Incidentally, congratulations to Peter Gilkers recently winning the, the World Billiard Championship again. If you're watching, Peter, congratulations, big fella. Just feel there's more onus on Ronnie really to try and play a more aggressive safety shot. Can you feel a little bit more prepared just to play containing safety shots? Rule number one when you're playing safety, get it safe. And he might even be able to get a snooker behind the pink. Yeah, but this time the cross double goes astray, and that should be fairly straightforward blue to the winning line for Ken. Yeah, no problem. So, the frame now beyond doubt. It's the five. ideal start for Ken Doherty. Would have liked to win the frame five or ten minutes ago. Didn't have to go through the stress of it, but in the end, Ken it was a decent performance that, and Ken Doherty strikes first. He leads the great man Ronnie O'Sullivan by one frame to nil. Remind you. So there was a bit of breathing space early on. Ronnie hasn't really got himself going. Had a chance to pinch that opening frame, but missed a pink with one red remaining when he looked well set to perhaps pinch it. But that's a good sign, a type of pot that you, you do practice. Very crisp right in the heart of the pocket. The first frame, obviously, was he lost us. Still would have certainly a frame that would settle you down. All aspects of your game would have came up. Long potting safety and got some pots. So both players would be certainly into a better rhythm there. Right. If there was any early nerves or apprehension about the speed of the table, they'd be gone now. Four. And he played in Wuhan, Ken did make a good start. And I said, should have went two and up. You'd be mindful of that as well. Nine. Yeah, so end of break, it was quite a high tariff positional shot that he attempted. Of course, there was plenty of reward. Should he Sullivan. get on that red Nine. near near the black there, but not this time. As said, eight tables here. So somebody scores in the other tables. Ross Muir leads one nil. David Grace leads 1-0, as does Tom Ford, Rick Matthew Selt and Ali Carter at the moment.
Yeah, Ronnie's actually been out in, uh, in China. He, he left on last Monday. So he's been there five or six days now. He'll be acclimatised to jet lag and all that goes with that. And he does take it serious, doesn't he, these big events in China. £175,000 to the winner of this international championship. He puts a lot of stock into them. Yeah, exactly, which he didn't always, as I said before. He, he didn't play in every one of them. And then when he did, on some of them, he nearly came the day before. Or even as it was, he was playing, he could question his attitude. But that's certainly not the case. And that's an encouraging sign for his fans, and worrying for his opponents that if he's here from Monday, well acclimatised. Because the jet lag can be a, a problem with the greatest will in the world. Just through tiredness, your concentration isn't what you would like it to be. That's not an issue now. One. It's certainly remarkable, Ronnie, obviously getting older, but there's still no let up in this quality of long potting. So they would say yes, your safety is the last part of your game to go, but I think that's been a key to his still dominance at the very top. Six. Still aggressive and attacking. A very high percentage of long pots and difficult ones. <laughs> Hasn't compromised Seven. his game for age at all. He's a very young man's game still. Yeah, it certainly does. The, the one thing that I do question, and you've got to be, at least try and be honest with your assessment at all times, that the one thing I, I don't think he quite has these days as often is the magic. You know that? Just magic shots. Well, He's still got them, but not quite as many. I've heard of them, all right. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, just the, the very odd occasion, even like in frame one, you know, he... 99 times out of 100, 10, 15, 20 years ago, the clearance would have been made. Yeah. Just the very odd slip, that's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> Us mere mortals are trying to look for something. <laughs> I definitely think as well, probably over the, the years, well, his positional play has got even better again. Very compact, so he's probably, he's probably out of practice having to play those magic shots. Spotted the plant nicely, didn't he? And making full use of it as ever. Using the three P's percentage position of play at all times. One to one. Maybe slightly less likely these days to start the match from the first frame with a century that he did. Seems to ease his way in a bit more. A bit like Tiger Woods and his pump always seem to par the first few holes before he went on a bit of a run, so. But again, experience, patience. <coughs> it's a fine line between being positive and attacking without also forcing it. So they tend to keep the percentages very much in his favour. Twenty-eight. You yeah, see, even there, the last path of the cue ball goes towards the red that he's looking for. So he played it two cushions Take rather than one. Small details like that are, are what, well, one of the reasons why anyone's a great brake builder. And of course, this guy's the best brake builder has ever been. He would have been desperate to clear up those couple of reds around the black. Eventually got an opportunity. 
and as usual has been clinical. 4-2-3. Brilliant at identifying the key red to open up the frame and the break and then tries to get on it as soon as possible. So in the blink of an eye, we've arrived at frame ball. Forty-nine. Not pretty much, anyway. So he needs the black, but no problem. Fifty-six. I think you felt coming into this game, if one player was going to win comfortably 6 1, 6 2, I think far more likely that would be Ronnie. Of course, Ken can win. Seven to one. First part of Ken's challenge is to keep it close, get it down to the wire. And then Ken with his experience and always a great bottle. You feel if he got a chance to win, he would take it. Looking for Ken, like everybody's doing enough early on to put, your, to, to stay, put yourself in position to win. 79. As I said, there's going to be spells and frames where Ken could do little about this, little or nothing about this frame. But so those other frames are scrappy. 80. The frames you call, he should win. He's going to have to win. 80. Yeah, it's a good point you make, Fergal, Fergal because as great a player as Ken is, and, and most of the guys on the tour are, you've got to be a realist, haven't you? You've got to, you know, it's right saying, oh, I'm going to go out and try and win 6 0, 6 1. Sometimes you've got to realise that that's probably not going to happen. So, yeah, I think it's a good point you make. I have a game plan. I think, yeah, take this match deep and pounce late on. Yeah, running obviously favourite, but if it gets to four all, for argument's sake, you'd nearly call the match even money at that 99. stage. Yeah. Beautiful break from running, yet another century. Yes, and it goes century 1219 of his career and the black for good measure. Ronnie O'Sullivan hits back in style. So the crowd being royally entertained as per usual. Ronnie O'Sullivan equalises. It's one frame all. Welcome back to Tianjin People's Stadium. Here in China, Ronnie O'Sullivan gets frame three underway, one frame apiece. And that was a lovely break, wasn't it, to get his evening underway. Ken, as expected, the first couple of frames is trying to work an opening, keep things tight. Ronnie, once he's got his hand on the table, he really refuses a pot. It's a difficult pot, got quite close. Probably a little bit fortunate to leave Ken some sort of a pot. <coughs> That's left a red to the right corner, very fine. No idea really where the white ball is going. Just commit to the pot.
six. Judge the pace that well. But of course, the issue here is those three reds around the black. Seven. Kind of scan of the table. <laughs> Obsessed, really, you'd nearly say, with trying to, at some point, get them free as quickly as possible. Twelve. Even that was a fabulous shot, wasn't it? Just, you know, it's the, <laughs> I just looked across the field and kind of smile, and <laughs> it's touch. one of the, it, yeah. I mean, to land that side of it looks like nothing, but it it could mean as much as well, forty or fifty points. That one little positional shot. Thirteen. Yeah. Self included. A lot of players playing position bats tend to think of. What we don't want to happen are, are don't be short, don't go behind Nine the red, in. where he only seems to have in his mind just the exact positive shot, real specific. And then, of course, it's one thing having the idea, but then to have the skill and touch to put it literally on a sixpence is brilliant. But it's his break building, the first part of it is the mentality. Yeah, I was like, it's looking for the money shot, even though it's very Five risky eight. and there's other options, but. You get that rid of that red, the pink spot's now in the open, onto both corners. Yeah, that's probably a bit more inclined to kind of win it off the blue here. <laughs> yeah, even there, playing 24. the red with the rest with the easy holding cannon for pink, it all makes sense. It's all so simple, but you've only realised that after he's done it. <laughs> he's seen, <laughs> he sees it before. Yeah. He sees the picture so early. Brilliant. It's, it's great, like, in your 50s, to be still watching him and still feel every time you, you watch him, you can learn, and you always do. Forty-five. Forty-six. Yeah, I didn't quite get through that one, so barring a plant. I'll be busy getting on a red. Can't disturb anything. That'll do nicely. Wow. Yeah, okay. Perhaps both reds would go, so it wasn't that difficult a positional shot, but the fact that he played it to perfection means that he now should win the frame at this visit. I feel in this kind of situation, he nearly views it as a challenge. That when the balls are more awkward, the black, even for him, is out 59. of commission. 60. Apart from skill, it's certainly a testament to his mentality, his attitude and application. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. Remarkable break. Not just great vision, but 
great skill to capitalise on that vision. 73. 74. Limb here, he ain't putting one from here. <laughs> yeah, let's hope I'm wrong. Yeah, not this time, unfortunately, but a, a fabulous contribution. And Ken Doherty obviously has had enough, so Ronnie O'Sullivan continues his good form. He now leads Ken Doherty two frames to one. Welcome back, Ken Doherty gets us underway in the frame before the mid-session interval, trailing by two frames to one. Against this man, of 112 in frame two, and then one visit to go to one in front. So it looks an excellent touch. It's hard to actually remember the mistake too well at the interval. Dean that a good start. <laughs> I think he touched the red there. Yes, a re rack has uh, quickly been negotiated, so. Yeah, both players had enough, so we'll get them racked up and ready to go again in a couple of minutes. Definitely a feature of the modern game, and rightfully so. Far more quicker now to. Yeah, so. Re rack's becoming a feature of the game these days. It happens all, almost every match, doesn't it, Fergal? Yeah, I'm rightly so. There was certainly a time where um, it was a lot more commonplace to, to, to drag frames out, but I think when it is shot, they generally players kind of know it's going to be staying out, get it on. Next one on. Yeah, good work by our referee, quickly setting them up. Off we go then, frame four. Frame four, Kent to break. Nice conditions actually out here in uh, Tianjin. Hovering around eight to 10 degrees in the, in the daytime. Very similar to sort of Western Europe conditions at this time of year, I would say. Oh, it's a sparkling long red. Yeah, apart from the speed of the table, actually seems very responsive. Playing screw shots as soon as you hit the white, it seems to zip off. It's a big ball. Yeah, and a classic example here when you're playing on your silver we've seen today, that there's plenty of frames to play for. Nine. But there's no guarantee in a frame or frames you will get an opportunity. Wasn't the worst break off in the world from Ken. And yet it could be the frame. 16. All of a sudden it's 3 1. It's not necessarily a case of you started being down or negative, it's just, you know, just running out of time. It seems to me 17. the way that Ronnie's game's developed down the years, he no longer bursts into the really in, in this type of situation, does he? On the odd occasion he might do, but. 
We were talking earlier about the magic shots, the 24. shots that he plays, but he plays it in a different way, doesn't he, from the first half of his career. Okay, you can see he's disappointed there. He's in half tempted to get the table a little rap with his knuckles. Joe, yeah, rather than play a power, power shot from the black or blue to open them up, certainly Wrong far more inclined to. Use the position of the balls. As we've seen earlier, there's a red at the bottom of the pack. In potting it, he naturally disturbed four or five other reds out. old school jump on the floor didn't quite work. I wonder what happened if Hanno dropped in. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting one because the rule in that has actually changed in, in recent years. What? I don't know exactly when it changed. It used to be when the referee deemed that the player's visit was over, whether or not it was over, when did Ken's visit change now to Ronnie? That's no longer the case. It's the it's the actual shot that's been played. If the shot has deemed to be over, then it's over and Six. it will be replaced if it falls in after three or four seconds. Ken was probably aware of that little grey area. That's why he timed his jump to perfection. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Yeah, it, it happened last week, didn't it? I can't quite remember the match, but it, it did drop, and the referee actually replaced the red. It dropped. I timed it. It was after three and a half seconds of sitting right on the, the precipice. But they're really changed. Yeah, so there was that second or two between Twelve. when is it the end of your shot and the start of mine. And with the bottom line 13. being quite a stain over the lip. Okay, Brandy, the chance that that'll kind of hurt Ken because it wasn't a very difficult safety shot. Ronnie didn't have to work particularly hard for this opportunity. 20. Yeah, he certainly wouldn't for a second be saying Ken has played bad or missed opportunities. And yet Ronnie's a comfortable 3-1, has a, a comfortable 3-1 lead. 28. Yes, this black then is frame ball. 29. To all but confirm a 3-1 advantage going to the intermission. Snooker fans would love to see Randy O'Sullivan in this kind of form and attitude and application. More or less at his best against Judd Trump currently playing at his best. Of course, could well happen. The general view was that if Randy O'Sullivan plays his very best, he wins. Judd's certainly starting to threaten that thought 43. at the moment.
पर थे That would be in best of 11. If three went down as opposed to a best of nine, just gives that a little bit more time. Of course, you still want to be 3 2 rather than 4 1 down. It's not quite panic stations. Cam at all has experienced being well aware of that. And again, considering he's 3 1 down, he won't be feeling too bad. question of Ken not taking 66. his chances. It's been more an issue of not creating enough chances. Yeah, pretty no century, but 66 is more than enough to see Ronnie O'Sullivan go to that interval with a 3-1 lead. He's played nicely. Ken Doherty hasn't really been in the game the last two or three frames, but it's 3-1 O'Sullivan. to experience track racing like never before? Thought so. It's time to race. It's fast. It's fierce. And it's all at your fingertips. Know when a rider is attacking. Know when a rider is giving their all. Experience track racing like never before. So when they clip in, you connect. Powered by AWS. Who said the driving experience can't be reinvented? New venue, new city, fifth largest city in China in terms of population, so well attended. So frame five, Ronnie Sullivan, 3-1 to the good gets us underway. Have to be noticeable as well as the tournaments in China. The crowd a lot closer to the table. In previous years, the first few rows seem to be either empty or advertising boards. Yeah, just the early stages of this, but uh, we can give you some information on some track cycling that's. Uh, it's going to be coming up on Eurosport, of course. Said earlier, Ronnie, when he plays safety, always plays some sort of side on it to maneuver the white. Ken's safety is a bit more traditional. If it relies on the contact on the object ball, would it be thin or half ball, three quarter ball, depending on what side of the table he wants to move it. strong right hand side and that there to clip it fine and check it just over it slightly which is left running his hand on the table that's a good test of his queuing Problem at the moment for Ken. 
two or three frames before the interval. Only been able to lay a glove on his opponent. Good shot there, getting the white back line behind the green, blocking off the left hand side of the table. and a miss, Ken Doherty, four. the first points that Ken has scored in this match since the tail end of frame one. And this type of frame has given Ken a chance to settle back down, a bit of table time sitting down for most of the last three frames. So not to put the white ball back there. Felt to be more beneficial in trying to play better safety, which he didn't do. Left the white short and pushed the red close to this right corner. the gap but Ken's got to try and get something going here got to get this pot leaving plenty should be faultless above all get the pot yeah. but the natural angle is going to be cannoning other reds yeah, nothing he could do about that sometimes you just got to take what's in front of you your medicine so to speak you know you're not going to get on the colours and just accept it yeah, you have to try and look at that as an opportunity at control of the frame rather than as a chance to win it. It's possible you could have got a nice nudge in the red and been on the colour, but it was a smart match play there. Stay in the game. Couldn't afford to miss it, let Ronnie in. And all of a sudden it's 4 1, it's just slipping away from you. There, even though it was tight on the cushion, still just playing that tracer left hand side just to maneuver the white yeah. to bring it over to the left hand side. Yeah, it was a beautiful shot, wasn't it? Very difficult to do that. It's such a small part of the white you can hit in the jump at the top and still <laughs> just plays the right shot all the time. Not prepared to compromise his technique, and not prepared to compromise because of the scoreline or state of the match. Safety shot there for Money. Again, initially looked to put, put it too thick. And then caught the pick to try and move them open and get a good white. <coughs> I think both of them have been joined this battle here, pitting their wits against another tactical master, trying to come on top. Like two grand masters playing chess, trying to maneuver each other around and trap them. Possible three ball plant here. Those two reds do look a plant. Difficult to tell, but uh, what 
damage, if any. Oh, a little fortunate there. It's almost impossible for Ken to get decent separation in, in a safety sense. So he's taking the pot on. No, oh, excellent. Well played. Yeah, played in such a way that if he did miss it, there was cover between the brown and the green. Decent chance, isn't it? But Eleven. it's just that bit congested in the that left corner. Back in the open, no problem, but it's just getting the, the a red to get on the black and sort of build the break down that end. Yeah, and when you're working off the blue and he was on the stretch there, Ken. It was actually even the Ken previous Dorothy. blue. Eleven. He should never have been in a position where he needs with the extension. I know the extension's more or less unmissable, but it also wasn't just the pass, it was trying to get back, stretching slightly. And that miss will be frustrating for Kemp, but also a bit worrying, as in a good chance, more or less point blank range. Just damage your confidence a little piece. This game doesn't forgive, does it? Well, you just know when you catch the red there, you, you know you're going to go in off. Four. And what's worse than that, he has left one. Now he can play the holding screw shot. And again, a wee bit concerned with good reason. The holding screw shot here just to nestle the cue ball, kill the cue ball dead. Yeah, that'll do. All right, not perfect, but it's a chance. And also Ken missing those opportunities, not only does it hurt his confidence, but also gives Ronnie confidence. If Ken with that kind of opportunity, he can only make 12. And he's going to feel even more comfortable and relaxed. Eight. It can sound harsh, but it's a harsh business. Nine. Playing the greatest of all time at his best. If you go and lose the match, and it's still a big if, if Ken was to lose this match, but if he did, and say you went in the practice room and said, you would have this chance today, that chance, the other, you, they would look, oh, that's pretty good. But the fact that you're playing against someone who's so punishing makes those chances in the moment you get them, which is, of course, the important part of the match, it just make, makes them more difficult. So even though we lost the last three frames, it wouldn't have hurt too much, silly as that sounds, because it wasn't like he was getting chances. Losing this frame would be a blow to more psychologically. Apart from the actual scoreboard being changed 4 1 as opposed to 3 2. Yeah, that plant is obviously. It, well, it's not on. It Seven looks a good eight. thing there, doesn't it? But I don't think it. It mustn't be on. Yeah. 
Yeah, it just looks like action to the heart. 24. High jaw. The feeling was unmissable. He'd play. 25. Possibly leaving it as insurance. If he does break down and does need it. Just looks a bit fractionally under high jaw. Would you at any time risk potting this red off the other red here? Is it too risky? If my opponent needs about five snookers, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it actually wasn't all that it's difficult, one. but it was missable. That's the, the reason why you wouldn't play it, I guess. Yeah, probably just a bit too risky. No, there's no <laughs> benefit for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the plan wasn't on. <laughs> But it nearly was. <laughs> I mean, fine margins. Yeah. Yeah, that shot you said certainly was on, but there's no need to take that risk. Yeah, if you were right behind it with cue ball in hand, so to speak, then you'd maybe play it. Yeah. Asking me to be adventurous or to gamble, <laughs> you probably need to know your audience. <laughs> I often say this, but at the top level of snooker, a lot of the times it is it's what you don't do rather than what you do, it's the shots you refuse that, that sometimes in the end you get the benefit from. So, going along nicely, quick scoreboard check, see exactly what he needs here. 45. 43 to the good, so looking for one more red and black. Once again, no century, but Ronnie O'Sullivan is firmly in control of this match. Ken Doherty has had enough, and the great man now leads comprehensively by four frames to one. But hasn't quite rejoined us in the arena, gives us a chance to pop across to table two and check what's happening. Judd Trump now 5-0 to the good against his 12-year-old opponent, would you believe, Wang Jinzong. All experience, of course, no, no real aspirations Four. of winning the match, you wouldn't think. Judd Trump continue, continuing on his way to 21 ranking event wins in a row, no less. But meanwhile, on our feature table, table one, of course, it's Ken Doherty with it all to do now. 4-1 behind against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Who's taken a firm grip of this match since the open frame, which Ken won. It hasn't been vintage of Sullivan, but it's been more than good enough to deservedly lead 4-1 at this stage. Shot of the match. One. Certainly pot of the match. It's a good sign knocking in that type of shot, isn't it? I mean, you don't play it very often, but even still. Yeah, 
it's kind of shot to give you an awful lot of confidence. Superb test of your queuing. Six. Yeah, tight on the cushion. Lip of the queue, so smooth, so straight. Fantastic. Seven. Ken, right from the start. Certain frames, if he was in cl close, or Scrappy had to win. And then it looked like a good chance to maybe be 3 2, be 4 1. And 20 minutes could be 6 1. And just those small marge, those one or two frames, he should win, as we said at the start. He had to win. it looks like fairly, doesn't it, to go into the pack in a couple of shots time. And as we were saying earlier, rather than smashing them hard and trying to burst them all open, he's tended the last few years to be a bit more precise, more like a gentle cannon, which disturbs three or four reds, then hitting it very hard to move every ball. We would have liked to have a little bit more angle on the back, it was a little bit straight, and it was hard to generate the power to go into them. Don't think he's on this red, just have to settle for a safety then. Ronnie Osarvan, 36. Actually good to see sometimes when he doesn't clear the table every time. <laughs> a bit of encouragement. Yeah, I know what you mean. But, you know, down the years it's been relentless more often than not. Not quite been that standard today, but what he has done when he's faltered, he's been keeping Ken pinned back. small things like that not going Ken's way. He's got a red, but nothing easy. You know, on another day, you leave the red over the corner and things are different, aren't they? Also on another day, Ken would play that red into the left middle, run through for the blue, but ball one down. Hasn't a lot of table time. Just lacking a bit of confidence. Yeah, I mean, even there, he's played that and he's taken the black off at spot, which would have been a play for Ken. So, again, a small thing like that. Yeah, it's not a certainty the pot in the left corner, but there's no point in playing it now. Well, it would have been with the black on the spot. Ah, uh, yeah, and it's all going wrong now. Secure and this would hurt Ken. Mm, not this time. Yeah, so Ken gets a fairly easy start. And meanwhile, you heard some cheers there. Coming from table two because Judd Trump 
has wrapped up a comprehensive victory on the other side of the arena with some fireworks to finish, no doubt. It's a 6 0. It, well, he wasn't overly tested, we've got to be honest today, but he was playing against a 12 year old Eight opponent in Wang Jinzong, who hopefully we'll see more of in the future. I'm sure we will. No fireworks to finish, but he was well past the winning point at that stage. And so that was nice. Judd Trump, 21 wins in a row then, gets his campaign underway here in Tianjin. We'll see more of him as the week goes on. And the target now for all the other players to be the man that stops the run that Judd is on now. Possibility of a plant there, but it's gone too far. <laughs> He's still tempted to play it. I've seen playing it now. He's going to be clipping the pink. We play with pace to go up the table. Very well. Good distance between them, had to, to judge and to be able to make it. And again, it's opened up the other reds, lovely. Yeah, this is, goes as far as to say this, is the best chance he's had today in terms of potentially scoring a, a pretty decent number. Yes, he's still 15 behind. So Going to need all of these reds, but every chance. Ken always had a nice rhythm. He's been measured and yet fluent. Never rushed a shot, but never took too long on a shot. Made any shot bigger than what it was. 37. Just see if he's brave enough to play the red nearest the left corner. No, he's not doing it. In terms of winning the frame at this visit, that would have been the play because then you have a low black for this red that he's playing 45. now. So it's far from a done deal. Oh. 46. Used every bit of the pocket there. Light up a preference for leaving that red to last, drop them behind us, just put a dead weight, and then if you put the black then, you do a chorus snooker, I'll be able to leave that to last. 53. We'd like a bit more of an angle in this red. Yeah, I can understand that the, the reasons why he's gone about this the way he has, but he has made it a wee bit marginally more difficult on himself, understandably. Yeah, I was saying the way I would play it. I wasn't necessarily saying it's the right way to play it. <laughs> Just uh, a little bit more percentage-wise. Again, not having that angle on the red. Brought the other red into playing the cannon. Again, not just potting this black, which is difficult. Obviously, the white's gone away from the red.
unbelievable. Played it very well. To come around there and then hit the pink. <laughs> was cruel. Wow. So the scoreboard is, is almost ridiculous at this stage. Yeah, they just put the one point onto Ken's score there, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with the scoreboard, but I think what we can see is that it does need all six remaining colours. Yeah, I'm not sure they've given the points to Ronnie for the foul on the black either. Originally, the starter frame made 36. He's still on 36 despite the foul. I don't think he should need the black, but... I think it's irrelevant anyway. We fully expect them to pop these five. Yes, apologies for the, the lack of uh, scoreboard on your screen at the moment, but as Fergal said, I think the, it's either clear to pink or black, but either way, it shouldn't be a problem, providing he plays this correctly. Not absolutely perfect. Well, there we go. So blue and pink for 5-1. Unfortunate with the black and cut back black and potting the pink, but as merciless as ever, picked up the pieces and he now leads 5 1 to Tianjin from day one of this international championship. The evening session here, Ronnie O'Sullivan, as you can see there, 5 1 to the good against Ken Dorkey. players back in their normal attire this week with waistcoats. Were you a fan of the pouches and more importantly leaving the chalk on the table? I didn't I didn't <laughs> think it was a good don't think it's a good look at all. Yeah it's been a theme. I, I can tell you there was one with Anthony McGill last week the, the tournament in, in, uh, in Belfast. Yeah Anthony was putting his chalk on the table rail. There is an actual reason for that because he was wearing a glove and he chocks his cue with his left hand and puts it in his pocket with his left hand. But because he's wearing a glove, but he's right-handed, but the reason he does it left-handed is because John Higgins does it left-handed. <laughs> so he started copying John as a kid because he wanted to, because that's one of your heroes. But he can't get the chalk in his pocket because of the glove, so he puts it on the table. <laughs> so he probably should wear a pouch, but anyway. advantage of it One. so rarely happens but we have to flag the opportunity of a break in the 150s yeah good good spot good thought the other time it happens in practice already now you'd be getting nervous <laughs> so rarely happens the opportunity 148 of Jamie Burnett is still the highest Six. Yeah, in the UK Championship back in the day. Four. 
and he didn't know he was on a, a more than a 147 with the last couple of reds. That is incredible, isn't it? He actually didn't know. You know, he, he obviously had taken a blue and a pink and a couple of them. It's not going to take a 155, so it doesn't have to stay for the black during the course of the break. 22. I think this will test him. Yeah, not half. This is a stinker, isn't it? This is a horrible shot. The miss is to the right knuckle if you miss it. Oh, right in the heart. Beautiful pot. And that was about all he could do. Still on one. That's where they said. No immediate. Need to stay down this end. Blue or brown. Something like that. Keep this going. Break at 34, so a possible 149 on. <laughs> 34. Make that 148. <laughs> but it, it clearly, I don't even think he's. Three. Yeah, he mustn't have. I don't think, but. You're too quick thinking, Ferg, that's <laughs> the problem. <laughs> but it was a chance, wasn't it? You know, I mean, obviously it still is. Yeah. 148. Of course, if he did get a 147, he'd get the high break prize, but obviously he wouldn't get the maximum prize because it wasn't a maximum with the situation he could have. But it would be a good talking point. If he, from here now, makes a 147. I think the conversation's over. Yeah, but it, it's a rare bird, isn't it? Even to get the chance. I mean, I, I honestly, I only had one chance ever as a player to for a free ball at the start of a frame. It was very rare. Once in practice, I missed the blue for a 148. I didn't sleep well for a week, I'd say. <laughs> that is impressive. Was it Willie Thorn Blue? <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, I did have to come off the <laughs> top cushion. I still Go should have got it. <laughs> As I said, from very early, I was well aware of the significance, potentially, of it. So once again, Ken, as has been the case for a lot of this match, being pinned back. Ah, I need to sense he, yeah, he's obviously under lots of pressure, and that's the sort of thing that happens. So it's a pretty decent chance this now for Ronnie O'Sullivan to perhaps wrap this match up. Then five one or six one, it wouldn't be described as hammering or anybody's being outclassed. It's just Ken could easily be three all with the, the two good chances he had in the last two frames. And as we said at the start, if he keeps a close three all four all, of course there's every chance then he could win. Four. Just staying close and then trying to put yourself in a position to win, but it's so easily said. And nobody's more aware of that than Ken, of course. Five. A great champion, he's aware of the small margins in the match. Trying to put your opponent under pressure. Been a tough old day for Kent. And Ronnie.
Ronnie O'Sullivan is virtually over the line here, just red and black. To all but secure a place in round two. Yeah, there's the ripple of applause that sort of confirms the fact that Ronnie O'Sullivan, if this red goes in, is going to be safely into round two here. It's been a good performance, all told, by Ronnie. Not without the odd mistake here and there, but we can forgive him that. In the main, he's been pretty neat and tidy in all aspects of his game today. 36. 37. Of course, he goes on to round two. Awaiting there is uh, Mark Joyce. 44. That's one to look forward to. That will be tomorrow. 45. Of course, Mark's task tomorrow is not made easier by the fact that he played his qualifier 52. around one a few weeks ago. And he's over here, match under his belt. Take three. certainly been strong 60. and sharp and all the good signs early on. Yeah, it's been a good performance, I think. Probably if you were marking it out of 10, it'd be something like a, I don't know, 7.5, 8 out of 10, something like that. Hasn't been absolutely on it, but he's missed precious little at close range and he's looked dangerous. Safety play's been in check. 68. Can't quite finish with a century, unfortunately. Ah, the yellow doesn't matter, he's well past the winning point. So Ken Doherty offers his hand of congratulations. Yeah, that's nice to see they're having a little chat together. Ken will have better days ahead, but as will Ronnie O'Sullivan. He moves through then to round two and a meeting with Mark Joyce. In the end, a comfortable victory by six frames to one. Yeah, so that wraps up our, our coverage today from out here in Tianjin at the People's Stadium. There'll be lots more for us tomorrow because in the early session, which myself and Fergal O'Brien will be back with you at 6.30 a.m. in the UK. That's 7.30 CET, amongst others. There'll be Luca Brassell, and lots more other players. So we'll look forward to your company then, but